So how do you feel that we can keep the art of West African drumming alive? And where are some places that there's West African rhythms like in hip hop that we may not think? Hmm. It's so evident in all the music, really. A lot of us just don't understand the placement of it, how it really works in there. There is not a rap song. There is not a hip hop song. There is not a pop song that djembe's or traditional West African or African drums of East Africa, South Africa, some kind of African rhythm can go inside of this music. Now, do we all understand that we are doing this type of music? No. You know, so we don't really understand how it does that. But the music is first, like we said, there are so many Europeans that are starting to use it now. Mm -hmm. So that's like, oh, oh, that's the thing now. Okay, so now everybody's starting to, I remember. A bunch of Paul Simon Graceland's going on. (laughs) Okay, I I remember, I remember, I remember I'm sorry, I love Graceland. I didn't mean to shout at Paul Simon. No, no, it's it's the truth. (laughs) I mean, there was a, I can't remember the name of the band, but it was a bunch of white people that won Best Reggae Album of the Year at the Grammys. Okay, come on. Matter of fact, I'm glad you said that because what, I'm not really, there's a, there's a reggae scene in South Ca- South California, Southern mm-hmm, California, mm-hmm. and I'm not a part of it, right? There's some like jam band reggae scene yeah. that I'm hearing, and uh, if the people blonde, in the room can the chime in, that there's love. there's a there's a, a problem where there's way too many white reggae bands to the point where black reggae bands can't even get a good look in the scene. Mm. Is this a, is this a true thing? It is a true thing. It's just crazy. It is it is a true thing because one. For us to trust the Trustafarians. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? God is me, Raj Trent. That's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mean to cut you off. Please, please no, no, no. I mean, we're looking at society. We're mm-hmm. looking at, you know, the issue of the privileges that are happening. Okay, I've worked with some of those bands. Revolution, I've recorded with them. They're all white. Soldier, that's the name. So, soldier, I work with Soldier. What it is for me is, it's a recognition of the culture of it. You know, understanding where it comes from. Who's in charge of it now? Who's doing what they're doing with it now? Are not these people mm-hmm. that have this cultural vibe. Okay, mm-hmm. seriously, even the lyrics that Revolution sings, they're, 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 they're of, you know, some oppression, and maybe they haven't done that, you know, and they're utilizing the living situation of people who have that and touching them, but the song still has a message in it. Okay. Now, whether we know who is giving the message, the message is there. To support and go into that, it's another thing. It's not like I wear their clothing, I wear their drum, you know, their their instruments and use their thing and do their thing and do their thing and do their thing. That's not what I'm about. Mm -hmm. I am not saying that soldier is the band and revolution is the band, rah, rah, rah. When I was in the session with revolution, the producer was like, "Uh, let me talk to you for a minute because I'm talking to them about being white playing this music. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because it's the truth Mm -hmm. that I'm going to deal with. Mm -hmm. When when somebody like Burning Spear would see me and say, Brother Leon, when Toots, the brother just passed away, Rest say, in peace. Brother Leon mm-hmm. knows my name. That's it. Mm-hmm. When Tabby of Mighty Diamonds, Brother Leon, yes, that's it. Because this is what we do. This is who we are. And guess what? There are many that want to be like us. Mm. And there's room for them. 
I don't know these bands' music or they politic, so I can't speak on whether or not they are authentic or not. I would like to believe that there are obviously ones that are and are obviously ones that aren't. But the the idea, like, you have to live in a pretty white and a pretty privileged place to to not find one black person to be in your reggae band? Okay. <laughs> like, where do you okay. live? Okay. In the mountains? You know, come on. Can he get the, can he I, set I up just, the speakers uh, or something? Uh, I, I, I tell you, I'll be honest with you. It is upsetting. It's upsetting as to be of that, that time period, that work doing the laying down the stuff and not having the recognition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bob Marley, where, where, where's the recognition for him? Mm-hmm. I mean, really, in terms of reggae, even of reggae. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what it is that we've done in the music world, how rap is, you know, right. I'm telling you, like, the McEwen and all these other people, they went t- until they heard, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we have a substance of originals originating Mm -hmm. you know and a lot of people following